So in this video, I'm going to do a tutorial that basically helps you to go all the way from uh, Read AI to Outlook and Teams meeting and extract those notes in the different tools. So I actually got this request from one of the viewers on this channel, which I'm pretty uh, thankful for. So first of all, thank you guys for um, for for asking the question. And secondly, if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. This is the thing I've been told to do. So I've been told to say that I need to ask you for subscription. So if you get value to this video, subscribe. Anyway, um, so what's the goal here? The goal is to take your notes from Read AI and then pass it into multiple to to tour, uh, into multiple tools. Now the problem is is that there's several different tools on the market that can accomplish this task, and 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 I've seen some personal problems with each one of them. So I'm going to give you my best take on how to solve this problem. I'll give you the overview and then we'll go from there. So first let's just jump right into the actual requirement. So this is literally word for word um, what the uh, um, user, visitor, subscriber, whoever you want to call him, sent me. So he's like, here's the information on what I'm trying to accomplish. Whenever read AI meeting ends, I would like to follow in to happen. Okay, so the trigger is read AI meeting ends. So transcript, that's straightforward. Highlight is saved to a Notion page. So he wants to go to Notion, templates, and then the meeting transcript is then saved to a note section in Outlook and his Google Calendar. So Notion, Outlook, Google Calendar, and Teams. So he wants to send the notes to multiple different locations. That's kind of the problem. So let's just whiteboard this first so we can go into it and then we'll kind of talk about how to solve this problem. So um, this is a really interesting one, and I don't know if I'll be able to do it in one video, partially because it might just get a little bit too complex and a little bit too long. But this video, what I want to do is I want to give you sort of like the, the tools and the direction, the overview and how to solve the problem, and then we'll dive into the details. So first of all, we got Read AI, right? Okay, and the trigger will be meet and end. Okay, so whenever that meeting ends, it's going to fire this web hook. And if you don't know anything about web hook, go watch my previous video. I got a web hook, a channel, a video on this channel that kind of really dissect what a web hook, web, web hook is. So that's one. Now, what he's saying is that when this web hook fires, it needs to do multiple things. So you're going to send this web hook and you need to send it to one entry point. Now, that one entry point will be either a Zapier or it could be a make, right? Or it could be a flow. That's Microsoft flow, M S flow. It doesn't matter. Any one of these tools will do exactly the same thing. Okay, but we're gonna pick one for this particular thing. And I think what I'm gonna do I'm going to use make. Now, normally I would say I would, I would use Zapier, but I'm going to use make for this particular one because I think it has the best um, capabilities. I think I don't know how to use make as well, but thing. and then what he's saying is that from here, what he's trying to do is he's trying to push it out to Notion. Let's use a different color. So he's trying to push it out to Notion. Right, it's trying to push it out to Outlook. Okay, right, and then it's trying to push it out to Google Calendar. This one might be a little more tough. Google Calendar, this one might be a little tough. And then he's also trying to push it back into Teams. So here's how I would approach this problem. Here's how I would approach this problem because there's a couple of fundamental challenges here. Um, he, here is what I would do, how I would describe the problem. There's kind of two buckets. Let's call this bucket number one and bucket number two. Okay. I'm going to say there's the startup. Right. And then there's Microsoft. And you kind of have to think this way all the time. So 
there's Microsoft way of doing things and then there's a startup way of doing things and they're very, very different. Microsoft is coming from an enterprise way of doing things, right? So they, so everything is, I'm gonna argue more complex. It's just a lot more verboseness to their implementation. The startup way is much more straightforward. Yes, F, right, straightforward. So you have to constantly keep these in, this in mind when you're doing this type of stuff. Else what end up happening, you try to implement a startup implementation to a Microsoft implementation, it doesn't work, you run into problems, etc., etc. So I'm gonna show you how I think you should be approaching and solving this problem. And in the next video, we're gonna go into the actual details of it because I wanna keep these videos sort of like bite size so you can kind of dissect them as you go forward. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna classify each one of these types of implementation. And by the way, there's Microsoft and then maybe there's Google, but Google, I, I will lump under the startup umbrella. Google plays nicer, nicer with the, with the implement, um, with the startup ecosystem, I would say. But it's still kind of outside, right? But it's, it sits within this bucket, okay? And I'll show you what I mean by that later on. So. Here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna classify them first. So read AI, I would classify that as a startup. Okay. Um, webhook, every single thing webhook is startup related. So this is straightforward. And I'll show you why I'm doing this in a sec. Zapier, startup. Yes, you. Make, startup. Flow, Microsoft. Okay. Um, Notion, startup. Outlook, Microsoft, Google, we're going to say startup. Okay. My MS Teams, Microsoft. Okay. So here's my, here's my suggestion. If you're trying to solve any of these type of complex problems, do not mix startup with Microsoft stuff. It doesn't play nicely. This is my own personal opinion about this. This is just from my own personal experience. So here's what you do. All of the things that are related to Microsoft, group the Microsoft activities to Microsoft. So what does that mean? Um, F Microsoft Flow is a Microsoft tool, so you're gonna have to use it, MS. Um, so in the Microsoft MS world, we got Flow, okay? We also have Outlook, okay? And then we have Teams, okay? And we have Microsoft Flow, so that's that's one. Every single thing else, you're going to group into the startup ecosystem. And the reason for doing this is because you're going to have to set up multiple different uh, tools and then chain them together. So let me explain a little bit more on the details. Now that you just keep these two groupings in mind because they're going to become very, very important. So let's do a new thing. And here's what you're going to do. You're going to group tools that are like binded together. So read AI. Right, we said it's a startup. So you're gonna push from a startup to a startup, which is make in this particular case. Okay, make. What is make gonna do? Make is gonna deal with all the startup related stuff. So the startup related stuff in Notion, okay? And we'll say um, Google Calendar. And I forgot what was the other one. Was it just two? Notion, Google Calendar. Yes, okay. Notion and Google Calendar, right? And then what you're gonna do is you're going to push the same event. You're just gonna push the same event to a flow. Okay? And then on the flow side, you're gonna push to Outlook, okay, you're going to push to Teams, and what was the other one? I think that's it. So Outlook and Teams, Google Calendar, yes, that's how you're going to do it, right? And the reason for doing this is because Microsoft plays really well with its own set of tools, and then you got the startup ecosystem that's going to play well with its own set of tools. Don't try to mix them. I've tried this before and it just, it causes a lot of pain. It can work, just to be clear. If you spend enough time with it, it can work. I just find it much easier to do it this way. 
So that's how we're going to solve the problem. In the next video, um, I'm going to start tackling because I don't even know if you can if you can push the Notion, and I definitely don't know if you can push the Google challenge, Google Calendar. The challenge that we'll have with Google Calendar is we need to know exactly which event in Google Calendar we're trying to push to. That's the challenge with this particular one. So this might actually be end up being the hardest. The other two are actually pretty straightforward and easy, but this one might be a little harder. So we'll we'll do that in the next video, and then we'll go from there and, and see what happens. Thanks.